Hi there. Today we're going to talk about how to solve absolute value equations. Sorry if you can hear some loud crickets chirping in the background. My window is open. It's kind of late at night, but I just can't help myself. I got to talk about math some more. So we've talked about solving simple linear equations, right? Like 3x minus 5 equals 10. How would you solve something like that? Well, remember, to solve an equation like this means to find the x value, the value of x, that's going to make it true. In order to do that, all we have to do is solve for x, which means to get x by itself. When we do that, we end up with something like x equals, and bam, whatever that is, is what x has to be to make this equation true. So what would you do? You know the routine, right? Add 5 to both sides, so 3x equals 15. Divide both sides by 3, that gets x by itself. And 15 over 3 is 5. That's the solution to the linear equation. All right, but what if we got a little crazy with it? You know what's coming now. What if instead of just solving 3x minus 5 equals 10, we wanted to solve this equation, the absolute value of 3x minus 5 equals 10. To solve an equation like this still means the same thing. We're trying to figure out what value of x will make this equation true. To make things a little simpler, let's just consider this equation, the absolute value of a equals 10. What values of a are going to make this equation true? First thought would be a equals 10, right? That works. The absolute value of 10 is 10. So 10 is a solution to this equation. Simple. But are there any other solutions to that equation? Are there any other numbers that are 10 away from 0, which is what absolute value really is? Well, yeah. Negative 10 is also 10 away from 0. So the absolute value of negative 10 is also 10. That's the whole idea with absolute value, right? You put in a negative and it spits out the positive, which we can think of as the distance from 0. Negative 10 and 10 are both 10 units away from 0, which you could really see if you plotted them on a number line. So the solutions to this equation are a equals 10 or a equals negative 10. There are two solutions, which is the big change here when we start talking about absolute value equations, that we can have two solutions. Coming back to our more interesting example, the absolute value of 3x minus 5 equals 10, how are we going to solve this equation? Well, we want to know what values of x will make 3x minus 5 have an absolute value of 10? Well, if 3x minus 5 is 10, then it will have an absolute value of 10. But as we just pointed out, if 3x minus 5 is negative 10, it will also have an absolute value of 10. So that would make this true as well. So in order to solve this absolute value equation, we need to solve two simple linear equations just like we're used to. We just got to do two of them. So the first one we have to solve is 3x minus 5 equals 10, which we already did earlier. We added 5 to both sides, then divided both sides by 3, and concluded that x equals 5. So this is a solution to this absolute value equation. But as we discussed, it could also have a value of negative 10. And then its absolute value would, again, be 10, making the equation true. So the other equation we have to solve is 3x minus 5 equals negative 10. For this to be true, this needs to equal what's on the other side or it needs to equal the negative of what's on the other side. Simple as that. Finish solving for x here, we'd add 5 to both sides. So 3x is equal to negative 10 plus 5, which is negative 5. Divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to negative 5 thirds. It's a fraction. Maybe you think it looks a little ugly, but that's okay. 
So those are the two solutions to this absolute value equation. Both of these values of x make it true, which we could see if we tried plugging them in. If we plug x equals 5 and evaluate this uh, expression, it's going to be 3 times 5, which is 15, minus 5, which is 10. And the absolute value of that is 10. If we plug negative 5 thirds into this expression, we'll have 3 times negative 5 thirds. The 3's would cancel out, giving us negative 5. Subtract the 5, that's negative 10, just like we wanted. And that absolute value is again equal to 10. Let's do another example to make sure you've got it. All right, here's a bit of a test. The absolute value of 4 minus 8y equals negative 2. What are the solutions to this absolute value equation? Well, there are no solutions, right? Why is that? Why are there no solutions to this equation? You could try plugging in some values for y. Doesn't matter. We immediately know that there are no solutions to this because what's the absolute value? Well, it takes the input and spits out its magnitude or distance from zero. If it's negative, it makes it positive. If it's not negative, it doesn't change it. In other words, you're never going to get a negative output from an absolute value. The absolute value of something cannot be negative. So there are no solutions to this equation. Let's get rid of that negative and solve this one, which does have solutions. So how are you going to solve an absolute value equation like this? Again, it's simple. We've got to solve two linear equations in this situation. Take what's inside the absolute value, 4 minus 8y, and set it equal to you know, the other side of the equation. Solve this. The other thing we have to do is take what's inside the absolute value, 4 minus 8y, and set it equal to the opposite of what's on the other side of the equation. So set it equal to negative 2. Again, why is that? Because if it equals 2, well, the absolute value of 2 is 2, making the equation true. If it's equal to negative 2, well, the absolute value of negative 2 is also 2. So that would make the equation true as well. We've got to make sure that we get both of those solutions. All right, so you could pause the video, take a minute to solve these if you want. I'm going to open my marker dramatically and slowly, give you a chance here. I hope you've done it. All right, let's solve this. What are we going to do? You could add 8y to both sides in order to get rid of the negative there. You could subtract 4 from both sides. You know, you just got to get y by itself. It's up to you what order you want to go in. Let's subtract 4 from both sides. So we have that negative 8y is equal to 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. Now we'll divide both sides by negative 8. So y equals negative 2 over negative 8. What's that? Well, 2 over 8 is 1 fourth, and the negatives, those cancel out. So we're going to have positive 1 fourth. We'll just write that here. That's one solution to the absolute value equation. y equals 1 fourth. But now we've got to solve the other equation because we don't want to miss one of the solutions. All right. Here, again, simple process. We could add 8y to both sides if we wanted to this time. So 4 equals negative 2 plus 8y. Then add 2 to both sides to get rid of that negative 2. So over here, we'll have 6 because we added 2. 6 is equal to 8y. Divide both sides by 8 to finish getting y by itself. So y is going to be equal to 6 over 8. And then you'll want to reduce that fraction. 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 2 goes into 8 4 times, so y is equal to 3 fourths. That is our other solution. These are the two solutions to this absolute value equation. Try plugging them in and seeing if it works. y equals 1 fourth. 8 times 1 fourth is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. That's good. y equals 3 fourths. 
8 times 3 fourths is going to be 6. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Always a good idea to check your answers. This time everything looks good. So that's how you solve an absolute value equation like this. You want to take what's inside the absolute value bars and set it equal to what's on the other side of the equation. That's going to give you one solution. But then you also have to set it equal to the negative of what's on the other side because that's a solution too. That will also make the absolute value equation true. Let's do one more example. Here's one quick extra piece of info before our last example. What do you think happens with an equation like this? where the absolute value of something equals zero. Do we still have to try to find both solutions? Well, now, what's gonna happen if we do what we've been doing? First, we would take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal to what's on the other side, 2x plus seven equals zero, and then solve for x. Then we would take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal to the negative of what's on the other side, which is negative zero, uh, but that's just zero. Zero times anything is zero. So, you know, when you multiply it by negative one, you just get zero. So in the case that it's equal to zero, you only have one solution where the stuff inside is equal to zero. All right, now let's do the real last example. For the real last example, we're gonna throw a coefficient or a factor here in front of the absolute value. So three times the absolute value of 2x plus 7 is equal to, uh, let's say, 6. Here, don't get scared, nothing crazy going on. All you want to do is get the absolute value expression by itself and then solve it like we've been doing. So I want this by itself. It's getting multiplied by three, so I'm just gonna divide both sides by three. Then we'll have the absolute value of two x plus seven on the left, once we divide out that three. On the right, you'll have six divided by three, which is two. And I'll leave it to you to finish solving that equation. I'll leave the solutions in the description. Be sure to let me know how it goes in the comments, and let me know if you have any questions. So much for me. Do I want to